Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of a great service for creating online interactive activities for your students. The service is called Book Widgets. You'll find it at bookwidgets.com. There are more than 30 activity types that you can create using this tool. Let's take a look at how it works. So here I am signed into my account and I'm in my, my teacher dashboard. And I'm going to create a new widget. A widget is another name for an activity that your students are going to create complete. So let's choose our widget type. And there are lots of widget types that we can pick from. Some of them are pretty typical things like quizzes and flashcards and you know matching activities and that sort of thing. And we also have some things like frame sequences and hotspot images. And you can see an active plot for your math students or math activities. We have arithmetic and charts. And we have some other ones down here as well. Now, what I wanna show you is the one that I think is really neat. And that is the split whiteboard. This is an activity or a widget, as Book Widgets calls them, in which you can put some text and video and images on one side of the screen and give your students a blank whiteboard on the other side of the screen to write their responses or create their responses. So let's try it out. So here it is. Let's just give it a title. And we'll call this one sample split whiteboard activity. And we can add a background image to this if we'd like. We can have things automatically resized if we upload them. We can add <laughs> little stickers if we would like. But for here, I'm just going to go down here to our sharing settings and allowing download. I'm just going to use all the defaults here. Now I'm going to go into the text and text is what will appear on the left hand side of the screen. We can do rich text in which you just write in the text and add the content. You can use the PDF option and upload a PDF and have that appear on one side of the screen. Or you can do a web embed, in which case you will include a link to some content. So perhaps you've found an article online you want your students to look at and respond to, this is the place you would do that. But I'm going to do some rich text here. And I'm gonna give this little prompt. Please draw a picture of your favorite mode of transportation. This could be a car, a plane, a boat, a hot air balloon, or any other means of transportation. Now, I mentioned that you could include a video as part of this text pane. And the way we can do that, just click on that little camera icon and paste in the URL for a video that you found online, or you can even upload your own MP4 file to include that in the text pane. I'm gonna use this one here, this little YouTube video that I found, and I'm gonna move it over here to the left-hand side. Now, I can also include images in here. So I'm gonna include an image down below, and I can do that as you might guess, by clicking on that little image icon. And I'm going to choose an image here, and I'm going to upload an image that I have. And I'll include this picture that I have on my desktop. And when it loads, I'll adjust it so it appears on the left-hand side of the screen. And there's my image, and you can see here, I can even crop it just like that. So that I'm using just that part of the picture, and then I'll click 
done. And we'll insert that image. So now that I've set up my text pane, I'm gonna to go to my title and reporting, and I'm going to enable submitting of responses. We can see here my email options. I can enable various email options and the submission form data. I'm gonna say, do I want student emails or not? Student IDs, student names. We can localize the activity. So if you'd prefer to have text going right to left instead of left to right, that is an option there. And you can see all my language options there as well. And finally, down here in our design, you can see my split screen is horizontal, but I could also change that to vertical. And when I open that up, you can see I can define how I'm going to split the screen. Right now it's 50-50, but I could do 30-70 if I wanted to, or any other combination adding up to 100. And I can add a cover image if I'd like, as well as changing the orientation from horizontal to vertical or landscape or portrait, as you might want to call it. So now let's preview this activity. Let's go ahead and preview it. And here's the student view. So our student will see this a little prompt. Please draw a picture of your favorite mode of transportation. This could be a car, a plane, a boat, a hot air balloon, or any other means of transportation. And now they have some drawing tools. So let's go down here and change out those drawing tools. We can see here there's text. We can do straight lines. We can do free form, which is the default. And then we have our eraser tool as well. Let's use our free form drawing tool. And I'm going to try to draw a sailboat. But I don't like that color. So let's go over here and change it to orange. And I'm going to use this. And I'm going to draw my sailboat. Obviously, this is not an art contest. And I'm going to put in some water. So I'll use blue to show that my boat is floating. So that's how the student will view it. Now, if a student wants to turn this in, okay, they'll just click on that little envelope icon, put in a student name, and we'll put them, make them student awesome. And it's then submitted. So I'm gonna close out of that student view preview and let's look at how we can share the activity with our students. Click on the share button, and we'll see that there are a handful of options we have here. Now I've already imported my Google Classroom roster, and so I'm going to assign it to my fall 2021 demo class. And we can see here, I can save it as a draft to my Google Classroom or send it right now to Google Classroom. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna to send to Google Classroom as an assignment. Now, obviously I forgot to put in a, a due date, but it's now an assignment in Google Classroom. We also have options for sharing using a QR code. Just click on that and it will generate a giant QR code that your students can scan with their phones or their tablets. I'm gonna use that sharing option there. We can also get just a link and we can put that link in any learning management system that we would typically use so we could put it in microsoft teams or Can canvas or any other lms of your choice we also have the option for an email or a short code and we'll have a unique code assigned to the activity and students would input that code so now I'm going to show you what this looks like to a student who receives the assignment in Google Classroom. And then we'll come back and take a look at the teacher view of submitted work. So this is my demo student signed into my demo Google Classroom, and he's going to click on this new assignment that was given via book widgets, and he can just click on it and the assignment will load. 
And he'll see that his progress is being shared with his teacher. And as a teacher, I can sign into my teacher dashboard and see how far my students have gone in terms of completing any of the activities that I've given to them. So now my student's going to go in here and do a little drawing, just like we did before. He's going to do his drawing. That's his sailboat. And he's going to change out that color. And there's his sailboat. Now he's ready to submit it. It's going to pre-populate his name. And he's going to send that in. Then in Google Classroom, it will automatically be marked as turned in. And as a teacher, of course, I can view that in my Google Classroom grades. Or I can go back here to my book widgets and view it under grades and reporting. And there's my fall 2021 demo class. And we can look at my sample split board activity. You can see my students listed right here. There's my student. And I can go and see what he's done right here. Now, as a teacher, I can grade this. I can write a little comment and say something like great drawing or whatever else I'd like to write. And he will get that feedback. Now, when I return the work, it'll remind me that this work needs to be returned in Google Classroom. Now, I can also tab through. If I had multiple students completing this activity, I could tab through right here and go to the next student. Now, if this was an activity that had multiple choice questions or short answer questions, I could have these questions automatically graded for me. But in this case, if it was an open-ended response, and therefore, I have to grade it manually. Now, I'll point out we also have this Live button over here. The Live button will show you any activity that you have in progress, and it'll show you your students who are working on it. In this case, that was two hours ago for that one. And here, this one was just two minutes ago. I can see he was working on it, and I can even see his work in progress right there. So that's a short overview of creating an activity in book widgets and viewing your students' responses to those activities. As I pointed out, there are more than 30 different activity types and templates you can use, including questions that students respond to with their voices and questions they respond to with pictures as well. As always, for more things like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.